and I am free in holiness. Thank you, Malbury. That's a good question. Those are the those are the practical questions because it, it comes down to putting the principles and getting into that flow in a practical way and and opening towards the focus on content and loosening from the attention on form. Or even the I know mind that says it's spiritual to do this or that. Like I've got those questions all these years, I've been traveling for 20, 20 some odd years and people would say, you know, I love their practical questions, they say, is it, is it more spiritual to lock your car doors or to leave them unlocked? You know, I really get these questions all the time and that's just one version of it. Is it more spiritual to eat a vegetarian diet or to eat meat, you know? And you really have to, again, pull it off the form and take a look at really the purpose or the motive underneath. Like for example with the car locking, locking the doors, you know, some people would say, I think it's more spiritual to not lock my car doors than it is to lock my car doors. But, I'm not sure. And I'd say, well, what's going on in your mind? Let's take a look at your thoughts. <laughs> because it's not about really whether the car doors are locked or not, but what are your thoughts? Well, well, actually, I went into town and I parked my car, and then I got out, and I thought, I'm going to, today I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit is going to protect my car. <laughs> and I'm in downtown and everything, and so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lock my doors, because I know that's the spiritual thing, the Holy Spirit's going to protect my car. And I said, well, what happened next? Well, I went shopping, I went to the grocery store, I went to buy some shoes, and this and this and this, and, and where was your mind? I was concerned about my car. <laughs> uh, I was so afraid it's going to be robbed. <laughs> I'm just going to go back there and I don't have the, what do they call it, the club <laughs> put on there and the car might be damaged or gone. So they said, so I, so I said, you went from store to store and you were just really concerned and fearful about your car. They said, yeah. I said, now, do you think that's spiritual <laughs> to be to be in fear. It's, it's important to start to take a look at the fear thoughts because then you can start to say, well, maybe I'm plugged into the laws of the world. Maybe I am plugged into fear and loss and lack. And I have to take a look at those thoughts and those beliefs. And that's a good thing. But to spiritualize matter and believe that certain behaviors are more holy than other behaviors is missing the point. You know, it's like the Course is about, of course, in shifting your perception. It's in a shift of consciousness. That's what the miracle is. And it's not in trying to accumulate more spiritual behaviors, so that like you can reach a certain point where you're like, okay, finally, now you're at 51% spiritual, <laughs> and 49% <laughs> unholy. <laughs> you know? But, we'll call you spiritual now because you're 51%, you know, you know, we'll let you use the, the title. It's just the spirit doesn't work that way. It's, re it's really looking at the motive, what's the purpose underneath, and letting those fear thoughts be flushed <coughs> up into awareness so that you can hand them over to the Holy Spirit. So it's a big difference between trying to act holy and actually coming to a place where a lot of those workbook lessons, my holiness blesses the world, my holiness envelops everything I see. I know sometimes people will tell me they get to those holiness lessons in the workbook, and that's when they shut the book. They just cannot begin to accept themselves as holy. You know, that's they just think, that that's, he's gone too far now. He doesn't know who I am. He's ah. giving me holiness lessons, and I'm shutting the book. I, I just feel too incongruent to be doing those holiness. I want to skip over the holiness lessons and go to the next ones. But he wants us to clear our mind. We just like let it all up, let it all up, and be able to look upon it with the Holy Spirit and give it to the Holy Spirit. And don't judge the form. We're going for a shift in content in mind. Miracles are everyone's right, he says, but purification is necessary first. There is a purification going on. Sometimes when people say, oh, I just can't handle that, it's like, well, believe it or not, you're a saint in training. 
Nope. Oh, God, nobody's ever called me that. You're a saint in training. You're on your way. And you're on in training. You're going through a purification process. You're opening to the miracle. You're letting yourself be guided. You're feeling better. You're feeling more joyful as you open up to that alignment. Of course you do. That's what our divine birthright is. It's our natural inheritance. It's not something, spe it's not like a special gift that's bestowed upon you personally. It's you're just opening to your natural alignment in spirit. And don't put so much focus on the form, you know. Just focus on your mind training and just let the form be what it is, you know, without focusing on it. It reminds me of, you know, that the Beatles song, you know, Let it be, let it be, let it be, eh, let it be, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. It's so relaxing. That's what the Spirit wants for us, the mind to rest, the mind to relax, the mind to, to not feel pressured, stressed, anxious. You know, peace of mind is no small gift, and and you start to realize that I am worthy of that. That's why I'm doing this mind training. That's why I'm paying attention to the thoughts and consciousness. That's why I'm asking questions about what I believe, raising my beliefs to the light, because I'm worth it. I'm worth the goal of peace of mind. And even if you start to let go of your goals of the world, Jesus offers peace of mind as a substitute for the goals of the world. You don't have to be concerned like, wow, I'm not concerned about getting ahead anymore or making it in the world. I'm less concerned about an image. I'm less concerned about reaching some kind of uh, form goals in terms of lifestyle or money or savings or whatever, beauty. I am going to relax into peace of mind being my goal. And I'm going to pay attention to my consciousness and my thoughts because that's my barometer, that's, that's my touchstone, that's, that's what I can use to help me, remind me if I need to come back to my goal. If I notice that I'm out of sorts, if I notice that I'm not feeling that peace, then it's like that's just a reminder, that's one of those oops, it's an oops moment. <laughs> To come back to, oh yeah, my goal is peace. My goal is peace. It's okay to have the goal of peace. Mm. Even if the world says that's not a practical mm. goal. You know, it is practical. That's why we're all here. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't be sharing this moment together if we didn't have peace as our goal. And it works. Mm. And I am free in holiness.